Good morning, folks. If you get out at first light, Jupiter and Mars are stunning. They're growing apart in the days ahead, but also growing more beautiful as Mars will be joined by Comet Ison in the fall. Until then, let me time travel back a few hours. For the next two weeks in the pre-sunrise darkness, a meteor shower may be lighting the southern sky. From horizon to horizon in the south, you might see the yearly arrival of fireballs from Aquarius. Here's our latest drought look. Nothing shockingly different from the last one on July 2nd. Something interesting, Chantel got ripped apart but is still churning north and gaining organization. Amazingly, it might reform tonight and into tomorrow. Salik has finally dropped wind speed slightly, but still. A major typhoon is alive and set to hit Taiwan soon. One of the most aesthetically astounding typhoons I've seen in my reporting. Storm shifting to south-central Australia while lingering around the North Island, New Zealand. Convergence north of Europe and one in the south drawing from the Mediterranean, popping those storms at sundown. So last week, this area nearly breaks the global heat record. Yesterday, they shattered a 94-year-old rain record. This continues the climate extremes discussion. It's so much more than just warming. In the southeast, I'm not hearing reports of any tornadoes, but I did hear of isolated severity, so let sunrise reveal the damage. Much of the same story tonight. High clockwise block in the center here. Power low way north of the border. While we'll still need southern Gulf states and east coast to mine their convergence, the Canadian power low is yanking north from the Gulf of Mexico. The primary tornado threat today is well north and into Canada. Spread this zone out a bit, actually. And again, the Atlantic and Gulf coasts on alert. Got some data missing on Bartol. I'm guessing it's larger readings from the incoming CME that spooked them. Grow up, guys. Coming to the GOES X-ray flux reveals a not-so-shocking Earth-facing quiet. Look at the decay of this monster group. There are no dangerous delta spots left, and just look how developed she was a week ago. Now we have a decaying relic turning the limb, but we won't be surprised if she exhales as soon as she's escaped us. New sunspot groups cresting now. Southern group is actually growing a bit. Top sunspot for the day today. Coming to the solar wind, the yellow is in such flux it's hard to rule out any of yesterday's possibilities. I believe the south pointing BZ wake of the first CME, a second density wave, and a bit of the speedier coronal hole stream all hit Earth in the last 36 hours. That's what's caused the off and on again geomagnetic storm that is unquestionably waning now. But for how long? The Earth facing filament eruption was two and a half days ago and NASA expects Earth impact at any moment. NOAA is expecting it later tonight. Geomagnetic storms are highly likely, Aurora Watch is major tonight, but I also doubt there will be any satellite or transformer damage. Folks, the umbral field opened six days ago, and a seven-pointer hit Papua New Guinea. Earth averages three or four six-pointers a week, but have had none since that day. A minor downtick only, but it should be ending with energetic and geomagnetic instability occurring during Earth-facing coronal holes. We're set to have it this weekend. We can tell on the flattened view that those holes are not quite Earth-directed, via the plus sign, but might get there today. It appears the holes get darker and larger as you look back to the limb. Got plasma dancing and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.